Good evening, students. We just took a test on probability, but we're not done with it yet, although this should look quite different. Basically, we're going to try to see if the situation we're dealing with falls into one of two categories, either binomial or geometric. And if it does, we're going to use these new techniques to find the probability. Both of the situations are based on Bernoulli trials, named after the guy who discovered them, Dan Bernoulli. And he happens to be the nephew of Jacob Bernoulli, who came up with the law of, the la law of large numbers, which we understand. So he came up with this to help us, uh, to help us fit situations into different settings. And uh, to be a Bernoulli trial, you have to satisfy these three bullets here. You have to have only two possible outcomes of your random phenomenon. We say success or failure, but it doesn't mean you have to have a failure. There has to be only two possible outcomes. The probability of success must stay the same for every trial, and each trial must be independent of the other. So a, a quick easy one is rolling a die. Let's say we're trying to get a six when we roll a die. Well, there's only two possible outcomes then, getting your six or not getting your six. The probability of getting your six will stay the same every time you roll it, and each time you roll, uh, each roll is independent of the past rolls. A couple other examples that may fit a couple having a child, uh, a boy or a girl, so there's only two outcomes. Let's assume that there's a 50% chance each time, so the other two, two bullets would fit also. Let's focus on a specific one here. Here's a random phenomenon, basketball free throws. Let's say that we are going to shoot until we make one. And the random variable is how many shots is it going to take until we make one. So really, we don't know how many shots we're taking. We're just going to shoot until we make one. Let's assume that somebody shoots 30% from the free throw line. Um, based on past, past information. How many shots until they make their first shot? Well, again, it's a random variable. We don't know for sure, but we can bring some order to the randomness. Let's make a, a distribution, a probability table. Uh, the chance that they make their first shot on their first shot is, of course, 30%. But what, what's the chance, though, that they don't make their first shot until their second try? That would mean that they would miss, which is a 70% chance, and then make their second shot. Because it's an and, you're multiplying, they're independent, 21% chance. The chance that they make it on their, their first make is on their third try would be miss, miss, and make. There's your numbers, multiply, that's what you get. And I have some more numbers here for you. Uh, of course, the chance that it takes six shots till they make their first would be five misses, 0.7 to the fifth power, times 0.3 when they first make it, and there you go. Theoretically, this table never stops because if they're really bad, they could take 20, 40, 60, or over 100 shots before they make one. So theoretically, there's probability all the way down to infinity although they get very, very, very small. Uh, the grand total here still has to add up to 1, or 100 percent. So if you add these up, they're not, quite at, they're not quite that high yet because there's a lot of probability, a lot of outcomes left to cover down below. This is called the geometric distribution. What makes it geometric is that it's a Bernoulli trial that doesn't have a set number of trials because you're going until your first success. So that makes it a geometric distribution. Here's a few things you need to know. P stands for the probability of success. Q, the probability of failure. If you wanted to know the expected value, how many do we expect it to take until we make one? Uh, that's simply 1 over P. Nice, concise formula. So let's find the number of shots we expect it to uh, this person to take before they make their first one, it would be 1 divided by p. Their probability of success was 0.3, remember? So 1 divided by 0.3 is 3.33 shots. That's how many shots we would expect them to take before they make their first one in the long run. Of course, sometimes they'll make it on their first try, their third try, their seventh try, but the mean is there. Now, what if we 
What if we are not shooting until our first success or trying until our first success? What if we're setting the number of trials and just counting how many we uh, how many successes we have? That crosses over into the binomial setting. So we're going to use the binomial distribution. So let's consider the 30% shooter again, but now we're taking exactly five shots and we want to know the chance that this person makes one of them, or three of them, or, f or all five of them. Well, making none of them would be five misses in a row, would be 5.7s in a row, and that's about 17%. Now, you might think that making one out of five would be 0.7 to the fourth power times 0.3, but that's, it's not that easy, because there are five different ways that we could make one out of five. And yes, they're all different outcomes. Our, our lone um, success could be on the first try, or the second, or the third, or fourth, or fifth. And these are all different outcomes. Now, each of these outcomes has the probability of 0.7 to the fourth times 0.3. But we have to multiply those by five, the five different ways. So there's a 36% chance we'll make one out of five with these parameters up top. Same thing with making two, but to make two out of five, there's actually ten ways. I don't list them all. There's ten ways we could make two out of five. So we're going to take 0.3 to the second power because we're making two. We're missing three, and there's, that's our probability individually. Now there's ten ways to do that, so it's 0 0.013 times ten and gives you 0 0.31. Let's fill in the rest of the table for you that we would do it the same way. And yes, these add up to 1, 1 or 100% because these are all the possibilities for how many we could make out of five tries. We're not going to use these formulas, but I was, we, I was using th this formula right up here. Okay, this, uh, the, this is a combination question, or a combination formula. It shows you how many ways you could make two out of five or three out of five. And then this, of course, the P and Q is just um, probability of success and probability of failure and how many powers. We're going to use the calculator instead for this. Yes, that should be good news for you. We have to know these variables to use our TI-83. N stands for number of trials, P probability of success, Q probability of failure, X is the number of successes. So let's say we wanted to find the <clears throat> probability that it takes us three trials until we make our first success. We would use geometric because we're shooting until our first success and we would use geometric PDF. P stands for uh, P DF stands for probability distribution function. Geomet stands for geometric. So we would just have to simply put in our probability of success, our 0.3, and let's say we wanted to know the probability that we make our first success on the third try, we'd put in a, a 3, where the x is. What if we want to know the chance that it takes us up to three shots to make our first basket? Then we would use Geomet CDF. The C stands for cumulative. Because we are accumulating the probability that it took us one time, or two times, or three times to make our first shot, up to three tries until our first success. So in that type of a question, you need to use Geomet CDF with the same two numbers here. All right, now let's say we're setting the number of trials. Five shots, for example. Well, that's why we're now crossing over into the binomial setting. There's a binomial PDF. There's three things to put in because we have a set number of trials now and the probability of success and the probability of making this many shots, x. Binomial also has the cumulative function. So if we're saying the chance that they make up to three shots out of five, we would use CDF. Let's practice that on the calculator. I have a calculator here for you. And there it is. We find this under second VARS, same place you find normal CDF. There's your normal CDF. We've been using that. Slide down further. And we have binome PDF and CDF. Let's try one of each. Binome PDF. 
you would use this for a situation where you have a set number of trials. Let's say we're taking five shots, comma, our chance of success is 30 percent. Point three. And we want to know the probability that we make, let's say, two shots, exactly two out of five. Close up your parenthesis and hit enter. And there you go. The probability is about 31% chance that we're going to make exactly two out of five. What about up to two out of five? So zero, one, or two out of five. We're going to use binome CDF. Okay, running a little slow here. Bear with me here. We're almost done here. Binome CDF. So again, we're talking about, let's say we're taking 10 shots. Let's look at something a little bit different here. 10 shots, and let's say we have a better shooter. The shooter shoots 60%, percent point six. And let's say we want to know the chance that they make up to six shots. So this would be zero through six. What's the chance that this person makes anywhere from zero to six shots. It's about a 62% chance because they're a 60% shooter, so there's a decent chance they could make seven out of 10, they could make eight out of 10, or nine or 10. So there's still some probability left, but there's a good chance they'll make anywhere between zero and six. What about we're gonna shoot until we make our first shot? That crosses us into the geometric setting Geomet PDF, let's say we're going to take, uh, we're not taking a number of shots, let's say that our chance of success is 60% still. Okay, and we are going to shoot until we make our first shot. What's the chance it takes us until our fourth shot for our first success? So what this is finding is we're shooting free throws, we're a 60% shooter, What's the chance that we have to shoot four shots until we make one? We make it on our fourth shot. Yeah, it's a low probability, isn't it? Because if we're a 60% shooter, we're probably going to make, there's a good chance we'll make our first shot, or at least within two, or maybe three. So it's unlikely we'll take four shots to make our first one. Uh, but it's possible, so there's your 4% chance. And finally, Let's do the same two numbers, but with GeoMet CDF. Okay, we're a 60% shooter, and we're going to put a four in here. And let's see the big difference. Wow, we go from 3.8% per, 3 to 97.4%. Um, and the reason being is, remember, CDF is the probability that we will make our first shot within our first four shots. So it's gonna take us up to four tries to make our first shot. Again, we're most likely gonna make our first shot within our first four. That's why there's a high probability. Make sure for tomorrow, you can use these on your calculator for some basic questions. And you also know what a Bernoulli trial is and the difference between binomial and geometric. Have a great night.